What's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to be discussing 10 of my favorite, much more masculine fragrances in my collection. Like, very manly scents, a lot of these are based around spices, a lot of hefty spices, aromatics and such. Some have that barbershop feel, some have more of a boozy type of feel, and some are just straight up bombs full of different warm and rich spices. Just stuff that kind of scream manly type of scent profile to me some of these are cheap some of these are niche we got a little bit of everything to cover so stay tuned starting with my actual favorite barbershop style fragrance it replicates it so well it's even in the name it is mason margella's replica at the barbers so this is going to give you a lot of those spices i was talking about a good bit of aromatics. It's got that smooth lavender aftershave type of feel, but it's also got that lathered cream, like the Barbasol shaving cream type of smell to it. There's a lathered thickness to it, as well as you get a little bit of leather in the backdrop. It's more of a smooth, not really animalic leather. It's more on the supple side, uh, not complete rawhide type of feel. Performance is slightly above average, but this one this is a hair on your chest type of scent profile. I think this is cream of the crop when it comes to barbershop scent profiles. Like I said, it's my favorite one in my collection. This kind of takes a timeless scent profile and masters it completely, at least in my opinion. Get your nose on this one if you haven't yet. It's my favorite from Mason Margiela. It's Replica at the Barbers. Next is probably my favorite oak moss dominant fragrance that I own. This is from a niche brand called Nishane. This is Hachivat. Very popular hype beast in its own right magnificent performer very classy and elegant masculine scent profile there's some freshness there's some citruses there's a bit of juiciness to the top but it settles down into this spicy green and slightly earthy tone of some just gorgeous oak moss in this dry down a little bit of woods there's nothing dark as far as smokiness a lot of people will compare this opening kind of down the same path of creed aventus but Really, after that initial spray, the similarities kind of fade pretty quickly, and it settles into its own fragrance, different from Creed Aventus. Though they both feature oak moss, this one is centered around oak moss and not florals and musks, kind of like what Creed Aventus is. So I digress from my point. Got to address the elephant in the room. I think this is a superior fragrance. This is much more masculine to me overall. It's not dominated by the fruits, though they are there. You get that brightness in the opening, like I said, but Earth, earthy green and spicy is really the dominance of this scent profile it's the majority of life that you're going to get on your skin is those type of accords is that scent profile at least on my skin in my experience yes you can get away with this one with a t-shirt absolutely but it definitely dresses up very well very classy extremely masculine scent profile it's Nishane Hachibai this is an updated, intense flanker of a timeless, classic, masculine fragrance. I'm talking about Azaro Pour Homme, but this is Azaro Pour Homme Intense. My absolute favorite version of Azaro Pour Homme. This has great performance. It's very warm and cozy because it's loaded down with warm cinnamon spice. A lovely sweet boozy kick there's a brandy note here but you still get the basis for what the original dna is about this soft spicy aromatic aftershave type of feel even though the note breakdowns aren't vastly similar to one another you will smell the original's dna here it will undoubtedly remind you of azara pour Homme, just a slightly more modern boozy and much spicier take because the original was pretty spicy on its own very aromatic this one you still get that aromatic feel just not really centered around lavender and such, more centered around cinnamon and booze, to be honest with you. It's kind of a bomb of the two, but man, it's magnificent, extremely masculine winter weather type of fragrance. Classy stuff, but you can get away with this one with a hoodie too. It's a Zorro Pour Homme Intense. Dry, spicy tobacco with a touch of sweetness, nuclear performance, definitely a man's man's type of scent profile with Amouage Journeyman. One of the most masculine fragrances I've ever smelled. Again, centered around some spices, but more of a dry spice. The aromatics here is a little bit of juniper berry. You will get a touch of gin with the hit, but not inherently boozy. Like sometimes juniper berry can give a strong gin note. Here it's just a touch. Provides a bit of an aromatic opening. There's Sichuan pepper, if I remember correctly. Kind of gives this red hot peppery kick in the top. There's other spices here. There's a very earthy, slightly dry, and leafy type of feel to this tobacco. It's absolutely lovely. This is definitely one that dresses up really well, though admittedly, 
I can't recall the last time I wore this and really dressed up much. I want to say maybe slightly formal occasion, maybe one time. Typically, I wear this one with a t-shirt when it's cooler outside because this is a cold piercing type of scent profile and performance. It cuts through the cold no problem. It's very strong. The quality is top tier as you would expect from a brand like Amouage. They're not playing with this one. This is not for everybody. This is definitely hair on your chest, man's man, super uber masculine type of scent profile. Definitely a try before you buy. Nothing safe about this blind buy. Again, that's Amouage Journeyman. Next, this is basically a, an affordable take on Dior Fahrenheit. Not dominated with the leather. You will get a little bit of that petroleum gasoline type of vibe from the violet leaf and the violet, but not too much. This is a little bit smoother overall, performs great. We're talking about Mercedes-Benz Intense. A fragrance that does not get its just due anymore. This is a great masculine scent profile. Kind of a reimagining of a timeless classic in Dior Fahrenheit. Pretty much a Mercedes clone to Dior Fahrenheit, but it's not one-to-one. -one. But there's no mistaking that they were going for Dior Fahrenheit. Like I said, it doesn't center around leather like the original does. It's a little bit different here, but definitely has this violet, violet leaf smell going. There's other notes. There's some citruses. There's a little bit of freshness at the top, but it's pretty much Fahrenheit overall in a bottle. Performance is great. I get about eight hours to nine hours on my skin. Projection's pretty strong for the most part in the first two to three hours with kind of a moderate to mild sillage. Nothing drastically room filling strong after pro projection calms down, but this is one that dresses up, dresses down. All the situations you would want to wear DR Fahrenheit in, you can definitely go with this one. Cooler weather definitely suits this fragrance. Fall, winter, early spring, evening appropriate. You name it. Like I said, if you would typically want to wear Dior Fahrenheit, you could save some money and just wear Mercedes-Benz Intense. Next, this fragrance is actually my scent of the day today at the recording of this video. It's part of the reason I had this video topic idea in the first place. It is Kajal Perfumes. This is Ferris, one of their newest releases. This is a spicy green aromatic that is centered around one of the most natural and luxurious smelling lavender notes I've ever smelled. The way I like to describe this one to people, as I'm going to describe to you right now, is picture fresh cut lavender out in a lavender field. That's how authentic this is. Beautiful, fresh, spicy tone, a lot of mild, slightly herbaceous, spicy greens going on here. A nice woody backdrop as it starts to dry. This is a luxury aromatic. Through and through, it smells expensive. It is expensive. Not crazy expensive. But expensive nonetheless, $210 USD. You can get samples of this from the brand. Um, you can get discovery sets and so on. I, it's become one of my favorite fragrance, fragrances in recent memory. I've been wearing this one more times than not. It does work well enough in warmer weather that you can get away with this one. It's not too heavy. But as it starts to cool down, you get into the milder fall weather and even early winter, this stuff shines. This is, like I said, one of the best, if not the best, lavender note that I have in my collection. And I have a vast amount of fragrances. It's absurd. Nobody needs as many fragrances as I have. So that should tell you something. This one stands out among many. One of the more masculine aromatics that I own. It's gorgeous. It's Kajal Perfumes Ferris. So a lot of people here would put the intense. Not me. I prefer the original. And I'm talking about Bentley for Men. Because a lot of people would go with Bentley for Men intense in this spot if they were going to feature this. Because yes, that's even more masculine of a fragrance. But this is no slouch. This is more centered around the spices and the rum. Whereas the intense is more about smokiness and leather. The woods are a bit more dense. This maintains the majority of that just in-your-face, uber-masculine jeans, boots, big belt buckle, and a nice blazer type of style that Bentley Intense has. You maintain most of that here. It's just a bit more wearable. Some people can't stand Bentley Intense. I get it. I like it. I don't love it. This one, I love. A few dollars cheaper. Not a big difference in price. If the Intense is 30 this is probably 28. If the intense is 28, this is probably 26. Literally that close in price range. Redundant to have both, sure. This is the original. That's a stronger, more intensified smell of this one. This is the way to go. You're not gonna sacrifice much performance. In my experience, this is a solid, easy eight to 10 hour fragrance. Projection's pretty damn heavy in the first two hours. And it stands out. The quality's there. Like I said, a little bit better and more wearable overall than the intense in my experience from my taste. 
and you still maintain all of that just ridiculous masculinity with Bentley for men. You know, I debated on putting the parfum here because as it dries, it becomes everything in the masculine department that this one is from the start. The parfum's a little bit more juicy fruit fresh in the top, but I'll tell you what, just from Jump Street with Raja Parfum's Apex, the Eau de Parfum, you're getting masculine tones, you're getting earthy green, you're getting smoky, you get a touch of freshness. With the parfum, which I do believe to be superior overall, not quite as masculine in the opening as this. I had to go with the Eau de Parfum, the first release. <sighs> Heavy, smoky incense in the top. There's a little bit of this earthy tobacco that kind of adds to that smoky tone. I smell it in the air. Such a great performer and such a masculine scent. One of the most masculine scents in this video, hence the reason it's in this video in the first place. Absolutely sample worthy. This one's a bit polarizing. It came out to mixed reviews when it came out earlier in the year. Then they followed it up, you know, several months later with a parfum flanker. To a lot of people, didn't make a ton of sense. I get where everybody's coming from with that. But I think this is the way to go. For the money, it's hard to beat versus the Parfum. It's still a very expensive fragrance. But if you like fragrances like Tom Ford's Italian Cypress, for example, very strong, earthy, green quality fragrance, that's what I would relate this to the most. The things you'll read online, pretty accurate as far as the comparisons with that particular fragrance. If you like that, but maybe that's a little bit more difficult to find, you might want to check this one out. If you like earthy, smoky tones... You will like this very dense, green, spicy, just rough type of scent profile, you know? <sighs> Good stuff. Super masculine. Roger Parfum's Apex, the EDP. This is a timeless classic for many, and that includes me. I used to wear this to school dances in middle school. I have a bunch of fond memories with the original Ralph Lauren Polo, also known as Polo Green. Another one, beautiful, bright, Fresh greens, piney green type of smell, this earthy tobacco note. <sighs> a lot of earthy tones, a bit animalic, a little bit of a leathery, musky type of feel to it. A timeless classic in my personal opinion. Like I said, nowadays there's people that'll call this an old man smell. Shame on you guys that think that. I get it, it's your opinion, you're right to your opinion, but... I have fond memories, as do many of you watching this video, with this fragrance. This will never be an old man smell to me, because I was wearing this as a kid. This is one of the most masculine scent profiles I've ever put my nose on. I love this stuff. I'm so glad that I rebought it last year. I've only had this bottle for about a year. Did a rebuy. Is it exactly what it was when I was a kid? Not exactly. I'm sure it's been through many formulations, but... The core of the scent profile is here. The performance is still really good for me on my skin. This is a relatively new bottle. I mean, if you want to walk down memory lane and you're looking for a man's man's type of scent, this was like the mark of quality and money and success for many years in men's fragrances. That's why it's green and gold, super masculine, is Polo from Ralph Lauren. Last but not least, one of the most luxurious successful men's fragrance, if you will. A successful man will wear this. Myself, as well as many others, have kind of dubbed it as the CEO fragrance. It's one that I personally love to wear with a suit. I don't wear it without a suit that often. We're talking about Zaharoff Signature Pour Homme. This stuff, very warm, spicy, and oriental type of fragrance. Little bit of a fougere appeal, but it's not really a fougere. Beautiful, bright lavender at the top. You've got a gorgeous... Gorgeous cypress note here. Bright, fresh green appeal. The myrrh, the oud, the incense kind of settles into this darker, more oriental feel. I get a bit of spices. I don't get much of the iris that's here. I do get a little touch of it. It's a very warm effect on my skin when I spray this one. This one screams man's man, but not just that. It's a successful man's man. This smells of luxury. I've always thought that. I've always said that. That's not going to change anytime soon. Like I said, this is the first fragrance I reach for and or at least think of when I'm going to dress in a suit or a suit and tie. This is the go-to because it screams handling business. Definitely quality. Definitely a successful man's type of scent profile. It's very masculine. Zaharoff Signature Pour Home. Well, that's the 10 that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What's some of your favorite, more masculine man's man's type of scents? Obviously, I have much more than this, but these are 10 that just really speak to me when I thought of this topic. 
And some of these I've been wearing recently, some I'm looking forward to wearing in the coming months. They're just great overall. Let me know down in the comments what your picks would be. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 that I featured and you give them a spray now, I'm pretty confident you'll thank me later. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.